sometime back in the last century, I, I moved to New York City to work in theater production, which I did. Uh, but when I came out of New York, when I moved out eight years later, uh, I came away as a map designer. And as a map designer, I've always been very interested in the visual display of information and, and uh, how that works, and particularly responsive design. Responsive design is all about how structure uh, can adjust to various environments and activities and form factors. Uh, in, in common usage, I think that uh, we look at responsive design as website coding that allows uh, layout and content to change according to device uh, in particular, whether it's on desktop or mobile, uh, portrait or landscape. Uh, but the concept of responsive design took its cue from architecture, where uh, Nicholas Negroponte, the founder of MIT Media Lab and also the one laptop per child, he first coined the expression responsive architecture in the 1960s to describe a building's ability to alter its form in response to activity or, uh, or, or use. And here's a demonstration of uh, a roof for the uh, central marketplace in Abu Dhabi that was designed by uh, Chuck Hoberman Associate. It changes according to the sunlight. So maps have traditionally had an affinity to the tenets of responsive design through scale. Information is modified uh, to fit either a paper size or uh, a screen size. Otherwise, we'd be facing the dilemma that's posed by Stephen Wright when he describes his map of the United States that is actual size. But a problem comes up with scale in today's mapping environment, and that is that scale and data display are in a locked relationship with each other. Mapping platforms such as Google and MapQuest uh, utilize a process where base, cartogra base cartographic data is predetermined uh, and, and baked into raster tile sets which are then displayed at specific zoom levels. A friend of mine's son, whose name happens to be Atlas, and who happens to have a passion for maps, wanted to test his fellow students' geographic skills for a science fair project. And he wanted to show the country of Bangladesh with 10 to 15 major cities. Uh, he wanted to show this full screen in a mapping platform. And it really can't be done right now. Uh, here is uh, Bangladesh showing 10 to 15 cities, but the uh, country is really tiny on the screen. Uh, and that's at zoom level six. At zoom level eight, uh, the country is the right size, but well over 100 cities are displayed. So we are currently working on controls that will allow base map density to be uncoupled from scale in order to show varying densities of information with appropriate visual styling. And all of th this kind of flexibility is going to be made much easier as cartographic data is served up as vector data uh, with style sheets that are perhaps on the client side rather than as composed fixed tile sets. We can look ahead one step further uh, to pairing vector data with smartphones or, or smart devices which will allow map responsiveness without direct user input. In fact, Negroponte, his vision foreshadowed this when he, re he realized that the responsiveness required communication back and forth, both ways. He expressed uh, the challenge as the following. Intentions can only be recognized in context. So if the context of using a map is navigation, and that has been determined by the fact that you've selected a destination and a route has been drawn, then we can, uh, the intent is, is clear and maps can respond accordingly. So as uh, something like speed can be used to determine the level of detail and, the dis and vector data is perfect to change the, both the color and content and size of information so that you can uh, look at something uh, 
quickly at a glance as your speed increases, type might get bigger, and you can see very quickly uh, what you're looking for. So that at 30 miles per hour, uh, a lot of detail disappears, and uh, you can, you can uh, just hone in on what you're looking for. Similarly, at a more close-in zoom, you may be walking along a street within a city and all the buildings will be labeled. Uh, if you're traveling in a car, even at uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour at the same zoom, the labeling can be modified to get rid of some of the detail and highlight some of the other detail. Now, some GPS units have begun to use this limited functionality. Uh, the way they've been able to do that is, in fact, because they're using vector data for their map display. Other examples of responsive design in maps that we're exploring are responsiveness to ambient light. And I'm talking about something beyond just adjusting screen brightness or switching to a night mode. We're talking about a range of color and style transitions from normal to perhaps a bright sun where the colors are increased so that it's still readable within the, sun, uh, within the sunlight. Or perhaps to a, a version for dusk the calendar can also be a, uh, a factor in, in making maps more responsive. Showing vegetation according to season here in the spring, changing to summer, to fall, and to winter. Within a zoom level, vector data is perfect for what I call locational exceptionality. And by that I mean that specific features are shown at specific locations. For example, when you're in a park, uh, terrain and elevation contour lines showing in the base map automatically. Or if you're by the coast, uh, you might be concerned about the impact of potential flooding from climate change. Or simply having a map that shows a little bit of what's beyond the area you're focused on. Here in the border frame, it's pointing out the other major cities around the area that you're focused on. So with intelligence and communication in both directions, maps can respond without the user having to push a button to see traffic or weather. Map tools can also reveal other hidden uh, information. In this case, we're using our lens tool to show the 3D buildings within uh, Manhattan. So these are some of the ideas that responsive design uh, is leading ma mapping in a, a, a leading to the future of mapping. A lot of what I've spoken about has been the responsive part of responsive design, and that's more the technical aspect. Uh, our current work on our own uh, white label mapping platform has focused a little bit more on the design part of responsive design, looking to satisfy the needs of our clients and also to uh, step up into the area that we feel is sometimes missing in some of the mapping platforms. We're incorporating a lot of local information right in the base map, from shopping corridors to buildings colored by type, and an overall high-end uh, look and feel that has a balanced shaded relief and an aesthetic coastline treatment that uh, pays homage to a style, the cartographic traditions of coastlines. And to help us use maps as a communication tool, we've built a notes interface that captures both scale and position, and then organizes it in Basecamp. I'd be happy to share more of this uh, with anyone that's interested. Uh, my colleague Mark Berenwald and myself will have office hours at 1015 in the exhibition hall. We're at a really important point in uh, in the field of mapping where map and location is growing and it's aligning very much with the shift in technology so that the paradigm of predetermined style is giving way to independent vector data and that allows us to have the opportunity and challenge to take these map elements and to have them be responsive to activity, to time, and to location and device. And in that way, the future of maps will be able to display exactly the map we need to meet the moment. Thank you very much.